uh, therefore, uh, you can see in this here the solubility coefficient for the oxygen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and helium. You can see the, this uh, solubility coefficient for the carbon dioxide is very high and two times more than the oxygen. When partial pressure is expressed in the atmosphere, one atmosphere pressure is equal 760 millimeter mercury, and concentration is expressed in the volume of the gas dissolved in each volume of the water. The solubility coefficient for important respiratory gases at the temperature are following. We mentioned before, and this one, this here, and from this table, one can see the CO2 is more than uh, 20 times as soluble as oxygen. Therefore, the partial pressure of the CO2 for a given concentration okay, is less than 120 that exerted by oxygen. The fusion of the gases between the gas phase uh, in the in alveolar and the salt phase in the pulmonary blood. We have another pressure and is vapor pressure of the water. At the body temperature, the vapor pressure of the water is 47 millimeter mercury. When air enters the respiratory uh, passageways, uh, the water evaporated, evaporated from the surface of and humidifies with the air. The pressure the water molecule exerts to escape from the surface is the vapor pressure of the water, which is 47 millimeter mercury at the body temperature. Once the gas mixture has became a fully humidified, the partial pressure of the water vapor in the gas mixture is also 47 millimeter mercury. This partial pressure is designated by pH2O. Therefore, you should be remember, humidification lowers the pressure oxygen of the inspired air. Based on the fixed law, another law for the gas, fixed law is a mathematical expression of the sum factors. Uh, the, the diffusion of gases in true flow uh, fluid pressure differences cause the net diffusion quantity of the net rate of diffusion in the fluid and uh, depends to different factors. Diffusion is proportional with de delta P and uh, A area and so C S solubility and reversibly uh, proportion with the distance or thickness and uh, the molecular weight. Uh, there are four factors, uh, uh, many factors affecting diffusion rates, and this, uh, uh, in this year we uh, should be mentioned gas diffusion is proportional again to the surface area, diffusion, uh, diffusion constants and partial pressure, gradient and thickness. The physical properties of the oxygen and CO2 enable to, uh, them to diffuse rapidly between the alveolar air and the blood. Therefore, the amount of these gases in the blood is not lim limited by the diffusion. It's very important points, okay? In this year, you can see the relative diffusion, of, uh, diffusion coefficient. For the oxygen is one, and for carbon dioxide is 20, in two, 20 times more than oxygen, okay? Another for the carbon monoxide is less than one, and nitrogen less than one, and helium near to oxygen. Uh, you sh should, you know, I, uh, we mentioned before, and you know, composition of the alveolar air and its relation to atmosphere air is very important. The concentration of the gases in the alveolar air are different from those in the atmospheric air. Why? Because these differences are shown in the table in this here, in this figure, in the uh, left side, and uh, can be explained as follows. One, the alveolar air is only partially replaced by atmosphere air with each 
Brits. 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 Oxygen is constantly being absorbed from the alveolar air. Uh, three. Carbon dioxide is constantly diffusing from the pulmonary blood into the alveoli. And four. Dry atmospheric air is humidified before it reaches the alveoli. And you can see in this here, the pressure differences causes net diffusion of gases through uh, fluids. In table shows that the partial pressures of the respiratory gases in millimeter mercury as they've entered the leaf, the lung at sea level. You should be you know, f for example, the, uh, the uh, partial pressure for ni ni nitrogen, oxygen, CO2, uh, 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 water, H2O, and in the atmospheric air, this pressure, in the humidified air, in this pressure, and the alveolar air, this here. You should be now oxygen in the alveolar air, this one, and 104. And the CO2 in the alveolar is 40, okay? And expired air, the pressure is different. You can see? This table shows that the osmotic air is composed almost entirely by, entirely by nitrogen and oxygen is normally contains almost no CO2 and little water vapor. However, as soon as the atmospheric air enters, the respiratory passages, it is exposed to the fluids that cover the respiratory surfaces. Even before the air enters the alveoli, it becomes almost totally humidified. Uh, P, uh, oxygen, PO2 of the alveolar air is lower than in the spiked air because of the uptake by the blood. Another carbon dioxide diffusing from the pulmonary arterial blood into the alveolar air rises alveolar PCO2 compared to that of the inspired air, okay? And the oxygen in the alveolar is uh, lower than the inspired air, but CO2 is more than. At the table in this here we mentioned before, the table shows the atmospheric air composes constant, uh, mostly by nitrogen and oxygen, 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 and contains almost no carbon dioxide or water vapors in this here, in this. And the atmospheric air becomes totally humidified as it passes through the respiratory passages, the water vapors at normal body temperature dilutes, uh, dilutes uh, the other gases in the inspired air, the oxygen partial pressure decreases uh, to uh, 149 millimeter mercury in humidified air, and the nitrogen partial pressure decreases to uh, 563 millimeter mercury. See this table. The partial pressures of the oxygen carbon dioxide in the alveolar air are not the same as those in the atmospheric air, okay? And reason for these differences we explained. Normally, the partial pressure of the oxygen is high and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is low in alveolar air. The opposite is true for the partial pressures of these gases in the blood entering the lungs, okay? It is these differences in the partial pressure that produce the driving force for oxygen to enter the blood and carbon dioxide to leave the blood as blood flow through the alveolar capillary beds. The position of the movement of the oxygen and CO2 is different. We uh, mentioned, we point out uh, be before that the average, uh, average uh, functional residual capacity of the lungs, uh, this uh, capacity is the volume of the air remaining in the lungs at the end of the normal expiration. The measures is about 2,000 uh, 
300 milliliters. Not only 30, uh, 350 milliliter is uh, new air is brought into the alveoli with each normal in inspiration and this the same amount of the old alveolar air is expired. Therefore, the volume of the alveolar air replaced by new atmospheric air with each breath, uh, breath uh, is only one seventh uh, of the total. So multiply breaths breaths are required to exchange most of the alveolar air figures uh, before uh, later shows this a uh, slow rate of the renewal renewal uh, renewal renewal of the alveolar a in the first alveolus of the of the figure excess gas in the present in the alveoli but not the even at the end of the uh, 60 breathe uh, the excess gas as well has not been completely removed from the alveoli. This very important uh, factor. Uh, rate at which alveolar air is renewed by atmosphere A is very uh, slowly. Uh, slowly, uh, the alveolar air is renewed uh, slowly by atmospheric air. But what? For the functional residual capacity. And uh, this uh, capacity is about this one as two. Uh, 1300 milliliters and uh, only 30 uh, 350 milliliters replacement with the any uh, uh, breeze in this figure you can see in this figure this figure uh, okay the expression of the gas from the alveolus with the successive 